Okay, so let's do the mechanics of breathing, uh, intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, how they interact, how we get more space for air to come in. And then we're really concerned about the spirometer trace and that trace with the lung volumes and capacities and how they link together. Um, hopefully we can explain that today and link it to an exam question. So the first aspect that we really want to understand is the fact that there is a route of air from mouth to alveoli. Obviously it goes in here, but to get it to those little tiny air sacs that are the alveoli, uh, there's a route that's followed that you might need to know about and nasal cavity larynx, trachea, bronchus and bronchioles, down to the alveoli, could well present itself as a question. And for those of you that like to write a few notes, um, you can obviously pause this part of the video. I'd just like to draw your attention to two things. One is the intercostal muscles that lie between the ribs and how they might interact with that diaphragm. And then the fact that the diaphragm flattens. Now, when something contracts, you might well think that when it contracts, it moves up towards uh, the lungs and therefore decreases the space but obviously when it contracts it flattens to increase the space and that's often a misconception and many thanks to THPE for these notes. The primary muscle of respiration is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a thin dome-shaped layer of muscle and tendon that separates the abdominal cavity from the chest cavity. It gains its shape from its attachments and from the organs that surround it, especially the heart, lungs, and liver. The diaphragm attaches at the costals along the lower rib cage, high in the front at the sternum, and deeply in the back along the spine. The diaphragm also attaches to itself via essential tendon, making the diaphragm one of the unique muscles of the body. The diaphragm uses its central tendon and its attachments as leverage to flatten during inhalation. The expansion of the ribs comes from the resistance of the internal organs to downward movement. As the internal organs are slow to move, the ribs expand to make room for the lungs. While the diaphragm attaches at the bottom of the ribs, its range of motion never reaches that low in the body. As seen from below, we get a sense of the full range of motion of the diaphragm as it would glide over the aorta, the vena cava, the esophagus, in the internal organs. For more information, visit www.3dyoga.com. Okay, so hopefully that's helped a little bit with our understanding of the diaphragm. Now this is the, the real body of our work. This spirometer trace, the spirometer is just the machine that collects the data, information about what is coming out of the lungs going in, but it's the trace that we are really trying to uh, get our heads around in order to understand the uh, links between the different lung volumes and their capacities. So first of all, we'll just talk about the tidal volume. Now that tidal volume, when you're well, as you're sitting there watching this at the moment, that breathing in and out that we've got going on here, that is happening as you are sitting down watching this video, and that is your tidal volume. You'll notice how shallow the breaths are in relation to some of the other peaks and troughs that we have in our diagram. And then we come to our first uh, reserve volume that we talk about, and that's this one here, our inspiratory reserve. That inspiratory reserve is everything you could take in. So if you were to trace your finger now along your tidal volume and then breathe in as far as you can, that inspiratory reserve there is being indicated by this top peak. Now as we come down, we get to the expiratory reserve volume. So if you breathe out and try and breathe as much out as possible, you'll reach this, reach this trough here. That on your spirometer trace is the extent of your expiratory reserve volume. As you breathe back in, you come back up and your normal breathing will return, which is again your tidal volume. A couple of other things to point out on our um, spirometer trace here. This residual volume, now that's crucial keeping your lungs apart and um, effectively your lungs would collapse if that residual volume that amount of air didn't remain uh, or there wasn't an amount that remained inside the lungs which kept them apart and then we have a couple of other uh, terms which I want to draw your particular attention to vital capacity which is often the question in the exam that is the expiratory reserve tidal volume and inspiratory reserve added together equals your vital capacity and that vital capacity is perhaps one that might confuse some of us. Okay. So 
So appreciate you can pause and make notes on this long volume definitions page and all of the volume capacities are there and explained for you and are all as important as each other when it comes to learn knowledge. And then we have our example question. Now, because the spirometer trace lends itself to any question the examiners might ask, I've included a very simple question, which was a, a past exam paper in 2010, the mechanics of breathing which allow a performer to fill the lungs with air during exercise. So that is inhaling the air. And just take a brief moment to think for three marks what you might answer for that. And then you'll see the model answer, including the mark scheme actually, is hopefully quite simple for us. Um, we've got that diaphragm and intercostal muscles being contracted, those ribs that are being pulled upwards and indeed outwards, and then the fact that the volume or size of chest increases. Air is then obviously sucked in, which allows oxygen to become available and the process of gaseous exchange can occur.